So, you're a year 11 student who's interested in STEM. Hopefully. I mean, I'm assuming so because you saw the title and the thumbnail and decided to click on the video. And you're thinking of getting an Arkwright scholarship. Good for you. But you have no idea where to start. You go onto the website and try and find out what the process is like. But apart from some info about a test and an interview, not much. And that's where this video comes in. If you don't already know, my name is Hodiv. I make content on student life, fitness, tech and productivity. And today I'm going to break the whole Arkwright application process down for you and also give you some top tips collated by myself and other art credit scholars at my school. So if you want to skip ahead to any particular parts in the video, I've put timestamps in the description too. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so before you even start to apply for an art credit scholarship, you're gonna to have to do some thinking. These guys want students that are serious about going into an engineering stream of sorts. So that means if you're planning to do something like architecture, medicine or finance at some point in the future, this scholarship probably isn't for you. For a rough guide on what streams are accepted and which ones aren't, you can take a look at this table from the Arkwright Student Handbook, which by the way is a super useful resource, like it's a gold mine of information. I'd recommend checking it out. And I've also linked it down below in the description. So back to this table here, essentially if you, can, if you can tell the course you're going to be doing is going to contain the words engineering, physics, technology, computer, you know, you're pretty good to go. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on to what an art credit scholarship can actually do for you. Having been a scholar myself, I can say the two main things the scholarship will help with are mentoring and money. So when I started, I got 300 quid in my bank account for my first year. But more importantly, more importantly, I got a mentor. The mentor basically like checked up on me, offered feedback on any projects I was doing, as well as like allowed me to have really deep intellectual conversations about like my favorite parts of engineering, STEM, which were about CompSite. And like, I actually really, really enjoyed this, like having someone to talk to about like your areas of interest and like the fact that my mentor was a software engineer at BAE Systems like helped so so much which is like another thing I'd like to mention you'll get tied up to and mentored by like really large engineering firms like BAE Systems, Depuy Simps and Rolls Royce which give you tasks and opportunities to apply for things like work experience and apprenticeships and obviously Having an art credit scholarship looks pretty good in a uni application or LinkedIn profile. So if you're an art credit scholar, that in itself shows that you're a passionate, hardworking and talented person. And those are really, really good qualities that unis and companies will keep a look up. So if you like the idea of that, you should probably apply. The first step of the application process is submitting an online application. Here they'll ask for a bunch of personal details like your name, your interests, your address, your credit card pin, and social security number. I'm messing, uh, I'm messing. But seriously, the most important part of this application is where they ask for details of a project that you've done that demonstrates your interest in engineering. Now, most people, if they do DT GCSE, will put down their DT project as their archive project. That's all good, like, you know, no shades, but realistically, if you want to stand out, you should probably do another project on the side, like exclusively for Arkwright. Trust me, you're going to think you can pull it off with your DT project, but that is extremely rare. If you still want to use your DT coursework, make sure, make sure it's like relevant to the area of engineering that you're interested in, and you can talk about the lessons you learned from undertaking that project. I personally decided to create a skin moisture gauge using a Raspberry Pi to highlight my interest in computing and electronics because my DT project was just a wallet. Like that doesn't have much to do with my field of interest, right? The next part of the application process is the aptitude test. This is usually the part that everyone's scared of, like, oh my god. But seriously, relax, like this is going to be unlike any other exam you've done before. Okay, like, I mean every word when I say is like the most fun and therapeutic exam I've ever done. And 
hopefully you'll feel the same way once you're equipped with the tips I'm about to give you. So let's get straight into it. Tip number one, practice, practice, practice. You'll find that Arkwright have put up a few past papers on their website and doing as many of these as you can will help you familiarise yourself with the format of the exam as well as the time constraints that you have. So if you're having trouble starting out, you can like look, take a look at the type of thing they're looking for by looking at the model solutions that we posted on the website. And maybe to start off, do one or two past papers under relaxed conditions without a timer and then start using a timer for the papers. Like timings are usually two hours for the exam. When I did it, I spent 10 minutes for reading time to choose which questions I do, 20 minutes for each design in section A, and then the remaining 50 minutes on section B. Section A, uh, section A asks for three concepts in limited detail, so, you know, keep the detail limited, seems pretty straightforward, but you need to explain enough that the examiner knows what's going on, but don't spend ages explaining each intricate detail. When it comes to section B, the trick is to write your answer in a way that someone can start from scratch and build your design into reality, right? Don't leave anything thinking, oh, don't worry, the examiner will assume this because it's so obvious, because they won't. Boys crack. Whether it's materials, dimensions, circuits, or anything else you've mentioned, do not leave any loopholes, make sure you've closed all of them. As a form of checking section B once you're finished, is asking yourself, if this was a step-by-step -step IKEA manual to building my design, what's missing? That should help you ensure no detail is left out. Again, find timings and strategies that work for you, but this seemed to work for me pretty well. Also, make sure you practice on A3 paper because that's what you'll be using in the exam. You want to like make sure that your design fills up a good chunk of the paper too. And if you want to take that a step further, Arkwright's also made available their actual drawing sheet that you're going to use in the exam. So you can print that out on your sheets of A3 paper. If you don't have A3 paper, which I'm guessing you don't because who actually stacks A3 paper at home? You can ask your school for some, I'm sure they'll give it to you, at least that's what I did. And all this talk about paper brings me on to my next tip. Tip number two, make sure your sketching skills are on point. I cannot stress just how important this tip is. You've got to make sure your designs can be communicated clearly to the examiner. And the best way to do that is drawing big, clear diagrams. Also use Sharpies or rendering pens to colour in key components. It will make your diagrams easier to understand, nicer to look at and, you know, colouring stuff in will actually keep you quite relaxed. Plus, the exam is an ed designer's and engineer's exam, right? It's one where making your answers look aesthetically pleasing would definitely help you out. You can try colour coding your designs so that, you know, like materials are in one colour, mechanisms in another, and electronic compo components in another. So like not only will this make the examiner more engaged in your work, but it will also indirectly make your answers a lot clearer to follow. So when I was practicing, I worked on an A3 sheet of paper for section A questions. I'd draw like a line down the middle and use half a page for each design. And then for the section B question, I just use one A3 sheet, draw a massive diagram, colour it in and add as much information as I could around the sketch. Now you're probably thinking, all right, hold it, this is very riveting stuff. You know what, I'm I'm not even doing my high voice anymore, like it's actually hurting my throat. All right, hold it, this is very riveting stuff, but what kind of information are you talking about? What do I actually write in the space around my diagram? My next tip answers just Tip that. number three, use all your knowledge. Arkwright exams don't just want you to do some sketching and writing. They want to see your all-round knowledge. If you've got a circuit in there, explain how you use V equals IR to vary resistances. Write some pseudocode if you're using a microcontroller. Calculate the circumference of a wheel if you intend on using one. Basically, calculations look impressive. So make sure you're using your physics, computing, maths, chemistry, and of course, DT. Now you might not use all of those subjects because maybe you don't take some of them or that is not your areas of interest, 
That's why you're going to need to pay attention to the next tip very carefully. Tip number four, choose your questions wisely. Basically, you want to be choosing questions that you want to do, not just what you think would look impressive. So if you're more of an electronics computing person like me, join the gang, they'll usually have at least one electronics question in there. So go for it. Both the questions I chose were electronics based and I found that I felt way more comfortable because I had so much opportunity to expand on what I was writing down, whether that be choosing an appropriate microcontroller, designing circuits or writing pseudocode. I also found it helpful to learn in depth about engineering things like types of motors, mechanisms, material properties, as you can always annotate your designs with this. It's the sort of stuff that you learn in DT, so if you don't learn, if you don't study DT, you should probably like take a look at engineering mechanisms and stuff. That way you'll be able to naturally just end up writing more. And not just that, the stuff you will be writing will be quality and not just some waffle. They look at the detail, so the more you can explain your designs, the better. And also to keep in mind is that section A tests your innovation and creativity skills, whereas section B tests your actual in-depth knowledge and ability to justify precise details for a design. It's no good picking a section B which you have tons of ideas for but you can't go into depth with and vice versa. If you think generating a bunch of ideas is kind of hard, this next tip is for you. Tip number five. Ask questions. If you want to get into that creative mindset you need for the exam to generate a bunch of ideas, constantly ask yourself about how stuff works. And if you can't find an answer, then use your resources to find one. For example, just look around you. Simple things like radiators, how do they work? Locks, lights, drawers, guitars. I'm literally just looking around my room. Try and work out thing, how things work, right? If if you have no idea, then the ideal solution is to come up with something yourself. You know, if you don't know how a tap works in order to give hot water when turned one way and cold when turned the other, then think as an engineer. If I were, de if I were designing a tap, what could I do that could create this effect? And then when it comes to the exam, remember that the right answer isn't actually what's used in real life, but they'll award more credit to an innovative idea that can be fully justified in its function because you practically just invented a completely new thing. All right, nice work. You made it this far in the video, which shows that you're not one of those people with fried attention spans clicking off the video to scroll through TikTok or whatever. So you're equipped with a bulk of the tips and tricks you need to ace a test, but there's just one more tip that you're gonna need. Tip number six, cross check your work. So you've been grinding for all the past papers on the ArcRight website, but you're starting to feel like you're stagnating in terms of your design style and how you communicate your ideas. To remedy this, it's a good idea to get someone else, either a friend or family member, to look at what you've done and see if they think it actually makes sense. Although the exam is there to assess your skills and creativity, it's not much good if your potentially amazing ideas are expressed in some crappy way which can't be easily understood. So I'd recommend showing your work to somebody and actually getting feedback on how easy it is to understand. Now let's say that you've followed all these tips, you've aced both your online application and the aptitude test and you wait in anticipation, checking your emails again and again every single day. And then one fine day, you open up your inbox and right there at the top is an email from a small piece trust confirming you've been invited to an Arkwright interview. Well done. You've made it to the top select view that Arkwright are taking an interest in. Now, because of COVID restrictions, my batch unfortunately had our interviews canceled shortly after we were invited. So it's hard to give any advice based on experience. But when I, what I can say is be confident Get your passion across and go in with good vibes like you need that's the most important part just go in with good vibes enjoy it okay it's going to be more of a conversation than an interrogation if you've been honest so far in the process so you've got nothing to be afraid of again the best way to ace the interview is through practice get a family member or friend to sit you down 
and ask you questions about who you are, your interests, your projects, and most importantly, why you want this scholarship. Hopefully, if you play your cards, play your cards right, you'll come out on the other side with another favorable email from Artgrove. So hopefully you found that helpful. I usually don't make videos like this, but hey, anything that helps a fellow student. My name's Hardiff. Again, I make content on productivity, fitness, mental health, anything else to do with student life. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe. It's a win-win for both of us. Thanks for watching, keep grinding, and peace out. Section A asks for three concepts in limited.